methi, the fenugreek seeds, and the garlic and the ginger and the curry leaves that are all just tossed in there. Can you start feeling the aromas while I'm explaining this? As you're cooking, you can start smelling all these aromas. That's cooking for you, and that's what I do day in and day out. I'm a strong believer in the power of home cooking. I truly believe that you know, health resides on our dinner table. The power of home cooking and the power of healthy food on the dinner table is much more than physical. It's emotional and spiritual health. It is one of the most important life skills that all of us need to know. Many of you might tell me, I don't have the time to cook. I work 12 hours and 18 hours a day, and I'm busy um, doing, I hard barely get you know, a few hours at home, and I want to couch, order in food, and sit at home, and watch some TV, and you know, gulp down some pizzas, or a takeout dinner, or takeaway from a store. But let me tell you, that's going to cost your health as you grow, as you um, uh, get into um, an older age. Cooking is a life skill. It is a life skill. It is as simple as, as, it is as important as brushing your teeth. It is a very important life skill. You know, it's not, it's not just about washing out the bacteria in your body. It's just not about um, 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 cleaning and, it, the, you know, brushing your teeth is just not about washing your bacteria and cooking is just not about filling your stomach. It's about building that good bacteria in your gut. It's about um, ensuring we are healthy by eating right. Let me take a step back into my childhood and how I grew up and how I was brought up. And maybe many of you out here might just sort of relate to that. My father and my parents were very obsessed about a lot of things. My dad essentially was very obsessed that I eat healthy. I mean, my dad was obsessed about fitness, about sports, about ensuring that I, 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 you know, I did strength training and I played a lot of sports and I did tennis. He also ensured that I was, you know, I, I washed the cars every day. I washed the cars every day. And I also learned to change punctured tires when it needed to be. What he did was teach me life skills. And that's me right there. And I continue to train. I continue to uh, live the life of my father and, and his dream of making me one of the strongest women. And I continue to be strong. And my mother was no better. She ensured that I learn how to wash my clothes. Rather, not learn, wash my clothes, clean the home, wash the dishes, chop all the vegetables, clean the vegetables. And a lot of those things that go into making us independent it's not about just going there and working and earning an income and being independent. It's about how you can treat yourself when you step out of home, how you can manage yourself beautifully and your health when you step out of home. Those are the life skills that my parents gave me. I'm 40, and I am a mother of two children, 11 and a half and 13. And that's my boys out there. And I'm passing on the life skills. They were four and six, approximately, when um, um, they learned to hold a knife and start chopping vegetables for me. I'm passing on those life skills to them. It starts early. 13 years ago, when I became a mother, life wasn't easy. I made a conscious choice to not give them processed food. I was a strong believer of ensuring that not baby formula, not baby um, cereal, nor the baby food purees that you get in the market. I did not give any of them. I really believed that children need to eat healthy, that I needed my children to get the right nutrition that they needed, that they get the right nutrition to grow. And it was very important that more than that, that they start learning to eat healthy right from the day they're born. They understand that they, this is what is food, and this is tasty food, and they grow with that. And as they started going into school, I, I pondered, it was not about marks and how are they going to you know, um, get their scores and how are they going to write fast and 
for me, the most important thought was, what is the food that I'm going to pack for them? That is going to instig that's going to trigger some right um, brain hormones and right um, energies in their body that's going to help them think and work towards learning better in their school. Food is really important for growing children. It is how, um, and I thought it's very important, I packed in like carrots, um, the dokla, which should go, and these are all things that I thought they need to eat, homemade food, and I packed in um, carrots into their uh, doklas and, and packed it with almonds, and just for a minute, just absorb those numbers there. Just watch those numbers, don't overprocess them, and don't scientifically scrutinize them. Just process those numbers that it's calories, proteins, fats, carbs, and fiber. Things that we have learned in high school, and things that we have studied before, it's not difficult to comprehend, just keep those numbers in mind. Incidentally, as my children started growing and I continued to pack such wholesome foods for their brain and their body to give them the right energies, I realized as they grew up, they started sharing information about how their peers were eating in school. Mommy, my um, friends are bringing pizzas, they're bringing cupcakes, they're bringing chips, they're bringing um, the fun foods, we want them too. It's so much fun, it's so tasty. I'm like, I I'm sure you do like your doklas and badam because they grew up eating them. They didn't know any better. Believe me, I have never given them uh, ice cream or a cake until they were almost four and a half, five years old. And I said, you know, yes, I'm not saying you can't eat them, but you're growing. You need to get the right nutrition. You need right uh, nutrition. And they, uh, in simpler words to them, that they need the right food for their brains. This was what was packed into the lunchbox of many kids. Day in and day out, I asked you to watch the numbers on the previous slide. Watch the number on this slide. Take a look at it. A six-year-old child or an eight-year-old child bringing in pizzas, cupcakes, chips, french fries, processed juices, processed ready-made um, Domino's pizzas. Notice the numbers there. These are not fake. These are approximation. Don't scrutinize them, but notice those numbers. It is worrisome. It is a big worry. It got me worrying, it got me thinking. How are we going to influence, and how are we going to make a better tomorrow? Uh, parents also fancy great birthday parties. McDonald's, um, you know, my child just chomps on those burgers, yum, and he loves those McDonald's burgers, which has tons of ounces of cheeses in it, and those french fries. I'm going for a McDonald's birthday party. Children are excited. Who are we training? Um, um, who is training them to start thinking like this? As parents, we are introducing them to McDonald's at a young age. Can I tell you something? Community eating is something where children get influenced a lot and shapes the way they think and they can eat as they grow. So when children are in birthday parties and in an environment like McDonald's, and they're eating burgers and chomping away fries, indirectly, you're telling them, this is a way to enjoy life and parties. Community eating for growing children is an extremely important factor into shaping our children's future, into how they think to eat better. Well, this is the state of many parents. Parents tell me, you know, my children don't know any better. I give roti sabzi, I give them, you know, the parata and alu gobi sabzi, but it just comes back. And, you know, just lunch just comes back. So I have to innovate to make better lunch boxes, which are more modern and, you know, and there's no option but to experiment, and it's called the New Aid Junk Food, which is junk food made at home. It's a nearly fancy word, junk food made at home, is a nice fancy word to say you're making it homemade, but you're actually calling it junk and packing it into your lunch boxes. It's an irony. This was my lunch plate for my 13-year-old's birthday party. This was what the boys ate. And I told my son, um, it was the last day of school, and he was calling his bunch of friends over, and it was his 13th birthday, and I told um, my son, is it okay I make this 
food, um, dal makhani and paneer and fulkas and salad. Yeah, mommy, go ahead and do what you want. I'm, I'm okay. So that was his answer. I was really proud that he didn't have an input because I thought he's growing to be an adult, um, getting into a teenage, and I need to ask him what he wants to do. And he was absolutely okay. And believe me, when the children came home, they lapped up each and every one of them. This, let me just describe these things to you so you, you can actually get a sense of feeling of how you can actually speak your children to lure them to eat such food. Here's the smoked dabadal, which is actually has a delicious creamy texture and it's smoked to perfection. And there's dal makhani, and there's paneer makhani there, which has a kasuri methi, which is a fenugreek leaves, which is which adds in this beautiful flavor. It's creamy, luscious, soft paneer. And there's a delicious, soft, fluffy fulkas smeared with ghee. And that pulao, which has a flavors of cardamom that goes into it. And that salad, lip-smacking delicious. It's got some grated carrots. It's got some cucumber, lemon, and a um, dash of salt. And it's fresh, wholesome food. This is what I gave the 13-year-olds, and it got cleaned, wiped. I mean, hu yes, I agree, 13-year-olds eat a lot. But that does not mean that they wouldn't eat this. Each one of them took two to three servings of that salad. Can you believe that? And the entire bowl, I did underestimate. I made a lot of food for eight kids, and it was cleaned. They loved it. Let me take a step back. Let us actually think about what we are eating, our Indian vegetarian food, okay? Indian vegetarian food is healthy. Let us embrace it. We have our dals, we have our rotis, we have our sabzis. It's about how we you know, entice with them? How do we interact with these vegetables? How do we mindfully think about each one of these vegetables and, and the dishes and incorporate it into our diets? We have some of the most, you know, world's best superfoods in our diet. As a culture, we are used to eating together as a family on the dinner table and bring in the love and warmth that goes into the food and all the food that's been cooked at home. That is our Indian food. The world over is adopting the um, um, superfoods that we are um, used to having, and they are embracing it. But there is a problem here. This is happening. It is for real. India stands for the highest number of lifestyle diseases. We are you know, among the top when it comes to diabetes. We are among the top when it comes to lifestyle diseases like cholesterol, triglycerides, um, heart attacks, and, and a whole lot more which are related to the way we lead our lives and the way we eat our food. And children, if we don't take care of our children, your nieces and nephews, if you don't have children sitting here, as parents and to be parents and as young adults, if you're not gonna take care of yourself right now, and if you become a parent and you become a child, you're going to put your child into that bucket by 2025. Let's dive in a little more. Numbers again. Notice that plate. That's the beautiful puri, yummy pulao, and that's the chana dal and our two sabzis and carrots out there. It is our food. Please don't stop eating puris and rice, please. Let's embrace it. It's good food, but I want you to look at the table on the left and the numbers on the left side. It shows certain numbers. What, what is, over the years of actually studying and going through transformation myself, I was at size zero before my kids and when I had my kids, I bloated to a size 12. And then it took me a while to sort of get hold of myself to get into shape and I was studying and understanding what is it that we are doing wrong? Why are the lifestyle diseases increasing? How can we actually emphasize on what, what is it that we can do when it comes to food? Portions. Portions are a massive, massive problem when it comes to eating right. And if we were to eat that much of portions, notice that 
we, servings, you know, the servings are large in India. It is not a tablespoon, by the way. The big chamach is large servings. The big thing which you scoop the dal with, it's a large serving. Now, servings, in one meal, you end up consuming 1,500 calories. Again, approximation, please. Think about it. Think about it. Servings. If for a 2,000 calorie diet or 2,400 calorie diet, you're actually consuming this much food, there is a problem. What if, I tell you, you actually make the serving into that? You cut it down. You're like, strip it down. You still get all the proteins and fats, and you're in level calories that you need to eat. Each one's calorie requirement might be different, and your protein nutrition requirement might be different. But study your own requirements and cut down your portion sizes. Portion sizes are a huge problem when it comes to eating right. We need to work on that. It's something that we need to think about. So how do we step back and start making a progress towards eating right and finding out the right ways to choosing the right foods? Many of you might say, I don't have the time to cook that food every day. But what you can do is every meal, all you have to do is some planning. Notice the colors on that food. That is a rajma masala. Delicious, got subtle flavors and it's creamy. And that's a palak kadi there. Yummy, and it's got some spinach in there and it's really piping hot. Goes great with some chawal. And that's singhare, water chestnut, stir fry. Seasonal, and that's joar roti, no, mixed with some wheat and some onions, and it makes it so flavorful, and some salad and some curd. Your portions, just stick to that. Cut that roti into one half and just have that, and you would have, you know, you would stay in the amount of calories that you need to eat. It's not about counting calories. It's about eating the right calories in the right portions. Ensure, how do you ensure you've set up a good plate? How do you know that you make good food pairings? It's all about colors. It's a very simple formula that I've sort of learned over the years. Probably not everybody follows it, but it's about colors. And sure, you include some green color, some orange, some brown, some um, um, yellow. Include all these colors of whites. Include all these colors in your diet. We have such rich food out there in our Indian um, diet. Let us use them, include all of them, we have so many different regions across India, and bring them together and let us use them in our diet. Another few tips. You know, the way I described food, start to think about food on the dinner table like that. Start to experience, start to explain to your children, explain to yourself, explain to the family, whoever, who is, if you're cooking, explain to your teammates, explain to the people. Eat mindfully. Mindfully is about thinking about all the different textures, the, the taste, the smell, the smokiness, the flavors, and all of them, bring in all of them, relish all of those that come in. It'll actually satiate your mind. Your mind will start ge getting filled up with all those thoughts, and when you do that, also start eating slowly. Eating slowly is one of the most important things that we all need to know. You know, at one point in time when I was in the 20s, I could gulp up three Nagarjuna biryanis all by myself. I am not joking. That was a fact. But I was young, I was fit, I was running, and nothing mattered to me. Everything was working fine, but as we grow older, it doesn't work that way. Eat slowly. Your, board, your, your gut brain needs to send signals to this brain, and each one needs to communicate with each other. If we start eating fast, then these two signals don't work properly, and we tend to overeat. And then after we have overeaten, we sort of feel dazed and lethargic. And there's a lot of things that happens when we eat fast. So eat slowly, eat mindfully, remove all those gadgets. Most of us are leading a sedentary lifestyle and um, tend to often eat with gadgets on our table, phones, um, laptops, newspapers, books, couch on the TV, and just gobble up food. When we do that, we don't know what we're eating. We overeat. And when we go into a great Indian buffet, we spend 3,000, and we say, oh, I need to eat that 3,000 calories. No, it's not. <laughs> we don't need to spend 3,000 and put in three or 5,000 calories into our tummy. Eat mindfully. 
get all the smells, get all the textures, and eat slowly. What is most important? So how do we sort of build and take this forward? That's my son, when he was nine and a half or 10, making a dosa on his own. How do we teach our children? How do we get to start cooking? Go and start today. Go into the kitchen, or if you're going to a restaurant today, look at your food and start looking at what is it made of, what are the smells, appreciate it. And for your children, as I said, get them into the kitchen. Teach them at least 10 valuable recipes before they can get out of home. If you haven't learned already, many of you here, maybe it's a time to start right now. Teach them 10 valuable recipes. All it takes is two dals, two sabzis, two, you know, one dosa, roti, and three breakfast dishes. That's it. It could be a sambar rasam, it could be a chola masala, and a kadi, or it could be a alu gobi sabzi, or it could be a toran avial, it could be anything. Teach them 10 dishes. This is gonna take them through their life when they get out of home, they know they're equipped with skills for them to step out of their homes and be on their own and be confident to get in the kitchen to feed themselves. You know, being a master chef and learning how to make fancy cakes is not going to cut it. Learning life skills of cooking your regional food, what you learned to eat at home, is important. My wish is, hopefully, to create a movement to empower each one of you to cook, to eat healthy, to enable your children to cook. By this, you, and also many of you to eat mindfully and use portion controls in your diet. And by this, if you do it, I do it, your children start doing it. We eat healthy in a community environment. Hopefully, we will spread this awareness together for a healthier tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.